Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. So we have a question from a fellow boater, Hugo, has a Glastron uh, GS259. Jeff, where is the best place to install an inverter on a boat? Oh, good question. There's not an easy answer. Not in the engine room, for sure, but I don't have a lot of space on my boat. In an outside galley compartment with a sink, in the aft cabin, where? Okay. So let's think about an inverter charger. An inverter charger is going to have multiple inputs and outputs, right? What's the purpose of an inverter charger? Well, the inverter creates AC, so alternating current from DC. So it means that inverter, by definition, gives you the benefit of running house loads on your boat, but it needs a battery. So that's one thing. The charger does the opposite, right? So the charger takes an AC input and it creates a DC output to recharge the batteries. And that's going to be a three phase charging. And then you obviously are considering that there's most likely going to be a remote panel to control the inverter and to turn it on, turn it off, to see the status, see errors. And so you're going to also want to consider where are you going to mount the remote panel for your inverter. Most inverter chargers don't come with a remote panel in the box, but you're going to want to consider having one. And I don't think I've ever sold an inverter without a remote panel, although most of the inverter chargers don't have it in the box. You need to buy it as an option, but a big fan of remote panels for inverter chargers. Okay. So knowing the AC inputs and there's a control panel and some of them also have temperature sensors and other things, but Generally, there's three connections, AC in, AC out, DC in, DC out. By the way, those are it's the same connection that does both in and out because it's an inverter charger, so it can pull or push in either direction. The other thing to consider, and that's really important as well, is the distance between the inverter and the batteries. So you got to remember, the inverter itself can be really far from the AC panel. Because why? Because your AC panel is going to be powered at 120 or 220, depending on the inverter you get for your boat. And the voltage drop on that line is irrelevant. I mean, it's there, but you know what? You're starting at 120. So voltage drop at 120 is only a problem for a really, 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 really long runs, right? But on your boat, that's not a case. What you do want to worry about is you want to worry about the DC connection between the battery and the inverter. And the further away you are from the battery, the bigger the cable gets. And there's tables for that. So there's a factor of both ampacity, right, when sizing DC cables and voltage drop. And you're going to want to make sure that you follow the recommendations from the manufacturer and there's going to be tables. But what that means is most of the time, we don't choose where we want to put an inverter. We get stuck by having the inverter closest as possible to the batteries. And so we'll have the batteries in one place and then we're going to be looking. Maybe the batteries are in the engine bay, but we're going to have the inverter on the other side. We're going to try to really minimize the DC cabling runs. Now, of course, you can naturally have the inverter far away from the batteries, but that's going to increase the cable size. And eventually, I've seen boats where it's not enough to have a cable that's the size of my thumb, right? It's actually what they need to do is they run two cables. And I mean two on the positive and two on the negative. They'll run double four on. So that gets pretty complicated. That's a lot of cabling for your boat. So when you're looking at, make sure that you have the inverter as close to the batteries as possible. The other thing too is you want to make sure the inverter is definitely not in a place on the boat that is not ignition protected, meaning it cannot be in a gasoline engine room. And that's what Google probably meant by not in my engine room. The other thing too that you want to make sure is that it won't get wet. Inverter chargers are not IP rated, not the ones that we put on boats. Uh, so they're not meant to be in the elements. The other factor is you need cooling. So you're going to put that inverter. It cannot be in a completely airtight space where there's no airflow because as the inverter or the charger is functioning really hard, it's going to heat up. And with that heat up, you need to be able to dissipate the heat. So to recap, uh, sizing cables to the battery. So you want to be close to the house battery. The panel is not so much of an issue. You want to figure a way to how you're going to route the cable from the inverter to the remote panel. That's another issue. And what I tell when, same thing I tell my techs when we're installing an inverter charger. The first thing you need to do when you're installing an inverter charger is you need to figure it all out. Don't even bother running a cable until you have a complete plan. You know exactly where the batteries are going to go. You know exactly where the inverter is going to go. You know exactly where the cable between the inverter and the AC panel is going to go. Because sometimes when you're on one side of the boat, 
you're almost stuck. You can't get to the other side of the building. So you need to figure all that out. AC is there, batteries are here, the cabling is going to go this way, the AC is going to go this way, the control panel is going to go this way, the temperature probe is going to go this way. And also, if you're on a gasoline boat, you need to make sure that as you go through the vapor-proof bulkhead between the engine room and the cabin, that you are actually making sure that no gases under any circumstances, and I mean no circumstances, will you ever have gasoline vapors get into your cabin space. So those are the reasons why doing an inverter charger isn't easy, but it's worth doing because it gives us a lot of benefits from running AC loads on our boats. And also the other big advantage that we get from that too is having high output chargers to recharge our batteries relatively quickly. So sometimes the pain is worth it. And I believe with an inverter charger, it certainly is. If you've got further questions on an inverter charger, we have a whole section on our website just on inverters, just on inverter chargers, tons of videos, articles. Um, use a search bar. It actually works. You'll get way more hits than you want to have on our website on just inverter chargers. And if you've got further questions and they weren't even answered, post them down below. And in my free time, just before I go to bed or when I early when I wake up, I will take a dab on YouTube and answer the questions as they come. Thanks for watching and be safe on the water. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask them below or send us an email via the contact forms on our website. Happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping this channel ad-free by purchasing some merchandise on our store or by making a donation on PayPal. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.